Hi everybody, and welcome back to Tech Talk. I'm your host, Abaya, and today we have a review on the Electronics Mech 15 G2. It's a new to the market thin and light gaming laptop. In this review, we will talk about the features, the value, and why you may want to consider it for your next purchase. So let's take a look at the Electronics Mech 15 G2. So um, this is one of the only thin and light gaming laptops with a mechanical keyboard. Uh, it has full RGB uh, backlighting and per key backlighting as well. This laptop weighs 4.5 pounds and uh, is about 0.8 inches thick. So it really is a thin and light device. So we can see here uh, it is a brushed uh, gunmetal aluminum finish on the uh, back of the display. The, uh, the lid or the, the deck of the laptop has the same uh, aluminum finish and the bottom of the laptop is ABS plastic. So this is the right side of the laptop. Let me change this over here. So uh, you can see we've got uh, two USB 3.1 ports and an SD card slot. And then on the back of the device, we have uh, the power adapter in, which is a nice placement in the back instead of on the side. We have a USB-C port, uh, HDMI, and two VGA ports. We have plenty of venting as well on the back and on the sides and on the bottom of the unit. Um, on the other side, we've got just one USB-A port, the Ethernet adapter, microphone in, and a uh, 3.5mm headphone jack, as well as the Kensington lock. So I'll show you the uh, bottom of the device. So if we look at the bottom here, it is a plastic build, but the plastic is very solid. It doesn't move. It's very, very uh, thick. Um, and then we have all of this venting, as you can see here. We have vents over the fans, vents over the CPU, and we have really thick uh, strips of rubber there. So uh, there is enough space for the laptop to actually cool. And the other thing about it is that uh, that rubber doesn't move, so the laptop is very stable. Uh, which I really, really like. So if you're in the market for a thin and light gaming laptop, obviously there are a lot of choices and you may not have heard of Electronics as a brand. So maybe you're wondering like, you know, why would I buy this over a Razer or over an Asus or over a, you know, Gigabyte Aero 15X? You know, they're all good uh, choices. I'm not going to say one is necessarily better than the other. It really comes down to you and what you prefer in a device. If you are more geared towards the way it looks, then the Razer 15 is probably going to be your choice. For me, I'm a power user, so I like a combination of things, not just the way that it looks, but the software experience has to be really good for me. The uh, customer service has to be there, and the value has to be there. I really feel that a lot of these laptops are kind of overpriced for what you're getting. Now, obviously there's a lot of engineering to get the performance in such a thin and light uh, chassis, but you know, still, I, I still find that there's some features that are lacking in a lot of these devices. I've tested a lot of different laptops over the past few months, uh, from Asus to HP to Gigabyte to uh, Aorus, I mean, you name it, uh, I probably uh, had the laptop. Um, I'm an independent reviewer, so I'm purchasing this for myself, and I was kind of on a mission to find something that I really, uh, really liked and I wanted to keep. And so um, all the other devices that I tested, there was just something about it that I didn't like. I tested the Alienware 15R4, the 17R5, and again, like I said, I'm not going to say they're bad devices. They're all good in their, in their own unique ways. So <clears throat> we're going to bring this in here just a little bit tighter. I want to show you guys this screen. 
So uh, we'll go into the specs of this device right now. Um, all of the electronics Mech 15 devices uh, share some similarities. They all have the 8750H processor. They all have the NVIDIA 1060 GTX uh, in, uh, graphics card. Now that is not the Max-Q version like the Razer 15. It's the full NVIDIA 1060 6 gigabyte uh, graphics card. So uh, as I said, electronics will build to order your PC so you can get something scaled down like a 128 gigabyte SSD, you can get the uh, IPS level display at 60 hertz, and you still get the uh, mechanical keyboard, the NVIDIA 1060, and the hexacore processor. So your RAM can be as low as 8 gigabytes, and it can go all the way up to 32. Now, they have several pre-built uh, versions available on Amazon and at their website, and those are usually a little more affordable than the custom build to order one. Now, if you go through Electronics website, you can also add thermal paste that's professionally applied to your CPU, so it will not void your warranty. And that's always kind of a nice thing to have just to get better uh, cooling temps. Uh, I prefer that myself. So I just want to show you this screen. This is a LG IPS 1080p 144 hertz display. And I think it's one of the best displays out there on any of the laptops that I've tested. Um, now, with that being said, the Aorus X5 V8 has, I think, the same exact display. So I like that display on the Aorus just as much. Uh, the value, though, proposition for this device is way better. So I think the better value is at the higher end. You know, some devices, the value's at the lowest end, some is at the middle. For this one, I'd say it's at the highest end because for the price, you're getting so much more. So I, the unit that I have is their highest end model for the Mac 15 G2. Now there are some even higher end models through Amazon that you can get like a two terabyte hard drive, but this is one of the higher end models, I'll say that. It's not the highest, but it's, it's definitely up there. So this particular one comes with the the 144 hertz IPS display, not the 60 hertz IPS level display, comes with 32 gigabytes DDR4 2666 spec RAM, comes with a one terabyte NVMe primary drive with Windows 10 Professional, and a one terabyte SATA 3 SSD uh, secondary drive. So you can store all your files and stuff like that on the SATA drive. If you want to reinstall Windows on the primary drive, you can wipe it clean without worrying about it. So it's a really nice thing to have. Uh, maxing out the RAM at 32 gigs is really nice experience as well. Now you can't change the CPU on this. You can't change the GPU on it. So um, I think the CPU choice is probably the best that you're going to get. Obviously there's the i9 that you can overclock to 5 gigahertz. <clears throat> There's the i7-8850H, which can be overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. But in my experience, these hexacore chips run so hot that they're thermally constrained, and especially so in the thin and light designs. So if you're running the faster processors, you really need good cooling solutions. You really almost need a desktop. I know it's a mobile chip, but Unless you have a thick design with a lot of cooling, uh, that i9 is going to throttle really bad on you. Same with the i7-8850H, although that one is probably better suited. Uh, if you don't overclock it, you can probably get better performance, but it's just nominal over the 8750, so it's not a big difference. And when I tested uh, Geekbench scores with this laptop versus the 8850H, uh, this one came in at about the same as the Aorus X5 V8. So now let's take a look at our keyboard here. So the keyboard, I'm going to turn the lights off so you can get a better uh, look at that. So we have Gaming Center software here so we can adjust the keyboard any way we want. We can change the lighting settings. 
So I'm going to adjust the lighting so that it's just on uh, just on one effect. So this is the rainbow, so it doesn't change on you. It's just one color format. I'm going to set the brightest to full. So as you can see here, the lighting on this keyboard is excellent. You even have a light on the, the space bar, which I don't see on a lot of other laptops. You get this full numeric keypad, so when you're entering in your uh, uh, password or your, um, your PIN, it's really fast and easy to do. And if you look at the F keys, uh, all the icons are illuminated as well. So let's just take a little bit, zoom in on there. So you can see those F keys, you have the icons, the volume, the uh, brightness for the screen, etc. All those are illuminated. So at nighttime, you can see those really clearly. The mechanical keyboard, Obviously, it can be a little bit clicky compared to a membrane keyboard, but you're going to have better uh, feedback. The travel on these keys is really excellent, and the spacing is pretty decent as well. So I really, really like the mechanical keyboard on this. I prefer it. It's just a nice added bonus feature that you're not going to find on any of the other laptops in this class. The closest uh, laptop in price range is the... Um, the Hero 2, uh, which has a very similar design. Um, trying to think. Uh, yeah, the, the Hero 2 would be the, the, the next closest as far as design is concerned. Uh, it has a full plastic body. This has aluminum and plastic. And the Hero 2 doesn't have a mechanical keyboard. It only has a 256 gigabyte uh, NVMe drive with a spinning hard drive as backup and that's one terabyte. It has the same IPS level or IPS display. It has the same uh, backlighting and there's an RGB strip in the front here as well as you can see that glowing now. Um, and that's customizable. You can change it. You can have one color or you can have a color shift like I do now. Um, the Hero 2, the Asus Hero 2, is $16.99. Now, there may be sales on that, but that's the regular price. Um, for six, for $100 more, you're getting double the RAM. You're getting way more storage space. The same NVIDIA GTX 1060 is in there, the same display. And I feel the build quality on this is a little bit better because of the thick gauge aluminum that they use. The uh, battery is a little bit bigger on the Hero 2, but not so much so, but it is bigger. Um, that would probably be the one thing about this laptop that could be improved is the battery life. Uh, they have several bays for expansions for storage, so I think there's another M.2 bay that's open in this that you could put another uh, NVMe drive if you wanted to. I would have rather eliminated the 2.5 drive and just had the two NVMe drives and maxed out the battery life. That's just my personal feeling on that, but you know, it's a small issue. All of these laptops, even if I put a 99 watt hour battery in here, the max you're going to get is six hours. So if you're looking at a gaming laptop with the Hexacore processor, battery life is just not going to be something that's going to be stellar. You're going to need to bring your power brick with you no matter what, especially if you're going through a full day. So just want to put that out there. Because this is thin and light, though, you can put this in your backpack, put the power brick in there, and you're still not lugging around you know, a 15-pound device like you would if you had a 15-inch uh, Alienware, for example. So the screen uh, is excellent, as I said before. I've tested a really high-end TN panel on the 17R5, which has a 2K resolution, but I just, I really don't like the TN technology. I don't know what it is about IPS. I just find that I can see details in the pictures and things that I'm looking at that I don't on TN panels. And the display is really important in a laptop for, my, for me personally, because I'm looking at it all the time. It's one of the major interfaces that you're using with the computer. And to have the 144 hertz, it's really smooth. It makes a big difference. Um, even just watching videos, you know, the fast action scenes look better. Um, most of the IPS displays at 144 hertz suffer from two problems, which is IPS glow and backlight bleed at the bottom of the screen. 
Some of them have it all around the screen. The Razer that I tested, the Razer 15, had a lot of backlight bleed on the bottom and it had really bad uh, IPS glow. This one has really good contrast ratio. The blacks are pretty deep black. There isn't a lot of IPS glow, so I really like that about this screen. Uh, it does excel compared to the competition in that regard. Also the mechanical keyboard. The trackpad on this is just your standard trackpad. It does not have a glass surface. It doesn't have dedicated buttons, which I would have preferred, but it does have Microsoft uh, Precision drivers, which I've had a few gaming laptops that didn't have that, and that's a really nice feature to have because, um, for example, the Asus models that I've tested, the trackpad is terrible on those. Like, it'll freeze up on you. The cursor will freeze up. It just it doesn't work very well. This trackpad is extremely responsive, works really well. The other thing about this computer that I really like is the software experience. The Windows 10 Professional doesn't have a ton of bloatware. The only OEM uh, software on here is the Gaming Center software, which controls the fans, which controls the uh, performance of the CPU and the lighting effects. So if I go into the Gaming Center, I can lock the processor cores on high performance or gaming mode and that will put all six cores at 3.9 gigahertz and it will sustain that as long as I have it in that mode. Um, so that's really good. So if you're gaming, you're doing something high intensive CPU, um, you're going to get the maximum performance out of this CPU and it's not going to throttle on you. Uh, you may have a lot of fan usage, but it doesn't throttle. So that's really, really important because a lot of these thin and light gaming laptops throttle back, especially like the MSI GS65 Stealth, it throttles really badly. And then it has a motherboard that's flipped upside down. So if you did want to add another drive or anything like that, more storage, more RAM, it's going to be a hassle to get to. Uh, this is easy to open up on the bottom, but of course with this particular model, there's really nothing you need to add to it. You've got all the RAM, you've got all the storage that you're going to need. Um, and at only a fraction more than the competition. So I really like the value of this machine. I like the build quality of it, the screen, the keyboard. The, uh, the two low points are the sound. The sound just doesn't get that loud. It doesn't have a lot of bass. Most laptops suffer from lack of bass. I could live with that. I just wish the volume was a little bit louder. It doesn't distort even at high volumes, so that's good, but you know, that is something to keep in mind. It does have a button here, so you got your power button and then you have a fan button. And the advantage to that is so say I'm gaming and I didn't I have my fan profile on gaming, but the fans just aren't kicking in yet, and I feel like the device is getting hot and I want to put those game, uh, fans on, but I don't want to back out of my game to do that, uh, to put, go into the gaming center, I can just press a button and it'll go on full blast. So, uh, and it'll turn off and on as quickly as I press the button. Some other laptops, they ramp the fan up, they ramp it down. This one is just instant on, instant off. I really like that control. It's a nice feature to have. Um, and. I'll put the fans on for you, but I want you to understand that the microphone on the camera that I'm using is pretty sensitive, so it's going to sound really loud. Uh, I would say the fans on full are kind of like having a normal house fan on at like medium to high setting. So yes, you're going to hear it, but it's not so loud that it's distracting. You could play a, a game on this and use the speakers that are included without Bluetooth and you, you're going to hear everything fine. Uh, there is good stereo separation. It's just that the speakers are down firing, so that's kind of an issue. It'd be nicer if they were on the top somewhere or at least front facing and not down firing. Uh, that being said, it's not a huge issue. I think the advantages of this laptop are the fact that you get Windows 10 Professional, you get a backup DVD so you can reinstall the software anytime you want and then you have that SATA drive to back up your files. Um, Electronics is a new company uh, and this is a brand new laptop to the market but I can say from my experience you can buy with confidence 
Uh, it's a solid build. It's a really good software. There's no glitches. I haven't experienced lockups or you know blue screens or anything like that. It's just really, really smooth, solid performance. And because there's no OEM redundant software, it, it you get the maximum speed that you're going to get out of it. So Electronics is a small company based out of Delaware. They're an American company, uh, small business. So I like to support that. Uh, you know, obviously they're not making everything themselves. Uh, this is a brand that's based out of Taiwan. But the difference between Electronics and say Origin or Ava Direct, some of these. Uh, reseller PC companies that build to order. You can build to order just like you can with those, but they actually have uh, put a lot of input onto the design of this laptop. They went to Taiwan where this company is headquartered and they had a lot of influence over the design of this laptop. So that's not something you're going to get from these other companies. They're just slapping in you know, your RAM and your, your hard drives and, and the software on it and giving that to you, whereas they really had more of a hands-on with the research and development of it. Also, they're the main distributor in the United States for the laptop brand that they're selling here. So that means that they're gonna get, you're gonna get a better value, which I think is reflected in their prices. Their sale price on the website now, like I said, I got this for under $1,800 with the specs that I said. And I don't know of any other laptop in the market that offers that kind of value. Um, and the customer service is really responsive. I was able to add the uh, thermal paste. Again, that's covered under the warranty. I'm not opening anything up and doing it myself, which would void the warranty. I like having that option available to me. I like the configuration options, even built to order. I got everything that I want at a price that I wanted. So I don't feel like there's something else I gotta do later on or, or you know, that I, I wanna buy a new computer soon because it's just not what I, not everything that I wanted. And I saved a lot of money in that process. So I'm really happy with this computer for those reasons. Um, we're gonna end this video with the video that I started in the beginning and just play it at max without me talking so that you can hear the speakers and look at the video quality for yourself. I've done obviously a lot of uh, close-ups on this display and you can see how great it really is. But I just want to finish, like I said, uh, to give you that reference point so you can decide for yourself what you think of the speakers and the video quality. Um, I'm not going to go into performance because it's a short video but I, I believe I gave the uh, Geekbench 4 results and, and those are really quite acceptable. Again, single core at 5200, um, multi-core at 22,400, 22,400. Those are excellent results. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching this video uh, with Tech Talk and I'm your host, Abaya. I hope I've answered all your questions. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. And if you'd like to, uh, I'm going to do a full in-depth video with uh, thermal temperatures, you know, um, stress tests and, and Geekbench and all those kind of results, uh, NVMe drive speed tests and everything. So look out for that uh, following up in the future here. All right, so here is the video. And we're going to turn this up to 100%.